Welcome to episode three of the Home Studio for Beginners series here on the Record Mix Repeat channel. I'm your host, Rusty Smith. Today's episode deals with getting your audio interface working with your DAW software. The interface I'll be using today is a simple USB powered interface with only two inputs. And the only outputs are for speakers and headphones. Specifically, this Behringer UMC202 HD. It has two inputs on the front, a headphone output on the front, speaker outputs on the back, and a USB powered connector. Don't even have to plug it into the wall. Super simple. We'll cover more complicated audio interfaces in another episode. Your audio interface is capable of working with any software in your computer that has sound components. That even includes the computer operating system. Whether you're using Windows or Mac OS, you have a choice of using the built-in sound card of the computer or an audio interface. For Mac, those settings are in System Preferences under Sound. This episode focuses on your digital audio workstation software communicating with your audio interface. Every DAW has preferences, and in those preferences, there's a window for sound. Or audio. Whatever they want to call it. Typically, there's a drop-down menu in that window that enables you to select an audio interface to use with your DAW. Just simply select your audio interface in that list to enable your DAW to communicate with the interface. Here we are in Studio One. We see there's no audio device right here. Here's Preferences. As you see in Preferences, there's all sorts of different things. And here's the Audio page. And we see there's no audio device. Just like we see here, there's no audio device. We go back to that page. Here's the drop-down list for the audio interfaces. Here's our audio interface right here. We select the UMC202, and we see, voila, we have our audio interface, and it's working. So now we're in Pro Tools. You see it up here, Pro Tools? In Pro Tools, we have to go into the Setup page. We'll go to a thing called the Playback Engine. Playback Engine for them is the, is the audio interface, okay? That's what they call it. All right, here's our list. Well, we know it's the UMC202, and there it is. So we select that, and boom, there it is. It's ready to go. We say, OK. OK, here we are in Reason. Let's find our audio interface. In Reason, we go to Preferences, just like you do with everybody else. We've got General, Audio, Control Services, all these different things. Here we are in Audio. Audio Device, Mac Mini Speakers. Well, we can work with those, I guess, but hey, that's going to be awful boring. So here is our two-channel simple audio interface in the list. Select it. Boom. Finds it, selects it. Another thing in that audio window will be a choice for the size of the buffer. Now you're thinking, what the hell's a buffer? It's actually pretty simple. Buffer sizes come in samples, typically ranging from 64 samples as the lowest choice, and then doubling in size, incrementing to 128, 256, 512, 1024, and topping out at 2048 samples. The buffer is a work area for your processor. The smaller the buffer size, the harder the computer processor has to work to accomplish what you're asking it to do. There are two easy rules about the size of the buffer. First rule, you want the buffer as small as possible if you're going to listen to what you're recording through your software. In other words, if you're singing and you're wearing headphones and you're listening to your voice through your software while you're singing, you want as small a buffer as possible. A smaller buffer reduces latency. Now, there's going to be an entire episode about latency coming up, so for now, just trust me. You want the buffer size small when you're recording something while you're listening to it through your DAW. The second rule, if you're not in the process of recording, then you're probably mixing. If you are mixing, you want the buffer higher. This is because when you're mixing, you'll probably be using more plugins. Now, in case you don't know what a plugin is, Plugins are simply virtual devices inside your DAW. Things like equalizers, compressors, reverb units, and echo. There's a whole episode on plugins in the beginner series that covers exactly what they're about. I'm just going to say plugins are a whole lot of fun, and you won't want to miss that episode. Anyway, 
Those plugins require more processing when you're mixing. And when you're mixing, latency is simply not an issue and a higher buffer is your friend. For me, if I'm monitoring through software while I'm recording something, I set my buffer to 64 samples. If I already have a lot of plugins going on, I might set it to 128 samples. But when I'm mixing, I typically use 1,024 samples. Okay, here we are in Studio One on the audio page again. Now we're talking about the buffer. The buffer in Studio One is called device block size, and here's the number of samples available. They go all the way from 16 samples, doubling in value, all the way up to 4,096 samples. So you choose your sample rate as you work. This is not part of the session setup or the song setup. This is, you can change this while you're working. If you want to be recording and have a smaller buffer with less latency, you can do that. And then if you're mixing and you're using a lot of plugins, you can have a higher buffer and not have a problem with the plugins performing. Okay, in Pro Tools, the buffer size is done in the same window that we selected the audio interface. And the buffer is right here, it says hardware buffer size right there. And here's your list of buffer sizes, okay? 32 to 1024. That's how you do it in Pro Tools. All right, in Reason, the buffer size, just like everything else in Reason, is on the Audio Preferences page. And here it is. This is the buffer size. It's on the slider. It goes, Reason goes from 64 samples, doubling all the way up to 4,096 samples. And you can see it right here, input and output latency. Remember I was talking about latency, 89 milliseconds, 87 milliseconds at 4,096 samples. Though that Those values get smaller and smaller and smaller until you get down to 64 samples. It's 5 milliseconds and 3 milliseconds. So there's a graphic representation of how the buffer and latency work hand in hand. The next aspect of your DAW talking to your interface is the input and output of your DAW. The input to your DAW comes from the USB output of your audio interface. And conversely, the output of your digital audio workstation goes to the USB input of your audio interface. This is all done through one USB cable. So to manage this input and output in your DAW, there's a thing called a matrix. The matrix is where you control the signal flow between your DAW and the interface. Most DAW matrices look similar to this. So now let's talk about the matrix in Studio One. Here it is in the song setup and the audio panel. The vertical represents Studio One and the horizontal represents the audio interface. This right here is the input page. So here's the inputs in Studio One. There's two because there's only two inputs coming from the interface. The outputs, this is the output of Studio One and there's only two outputs, you know, left and right on our interface. And so there it is right there. Those hit the speakers and they also uh, hit the headphones. So that's your matrix. That's as simple as a matrix can get right there. All right, in Pro Tools, the matrix is accessed on the setup menu, the I.O. page. I.O. stands for input and output. The interface has two inputs, so it's only going to send two things to Pro Tools. So Pro Tools only has two inputs for the interface, and they come from the interface and go into Pro Tools. Now on the output page, you have the output of Pro Tools, and it only has two outputs available to go to the interface because the interface only has two outputs on it. So that's the, as simple as a matrix can get, and that's how you do that in Pro Tools. Of course, you've got a matrix that, oh my God, don't, don't look at that. <laughs> okay, don't worry about that. We'll explain that later. Okay, the matrix in Reason is really not a classic looking matrix where you have the horizontal and vertical like you do in Studio One and Pro Tools. You have a list of active input channels and a list of active output channels. The current audio interface only has two input channels and only accepts two output channels. So that's all you get. If you have an interface with more inputs and outputs than this list here, will give you options to access them. 
The last aspect of your DAW working with your audio interface is the sample rate and the bit rate. This choice is usually made when creating a new song or a project or a session or whatever your brand of DAW calls it when you make a new file. There's a lot of opinion regarding what the best sample rate is and what bit rate to use. You're welcome to do all the investigating you want to on the subject. I mean, go on YouTube and search what's the best sample rate to use. You're going to be hit with a thousand opinions and it's all going to be very droll and dry and technical. I'm just going to say this. I've mixed movies and television shows for Showtime, HBO, Netflix. I mean, I'm talking all the major studios and networks out here in Hollywood. And when it comes to delivery specifications, they all agree 48K sample rate with a 24-bit resolution works quite well. And I happen to agree with them. The delivery specifications for Batman, Transformers, Avengers, Game of Thrones, Fargo, Breaking Bad. I mean, if you think those shows sounded great, well, they were all done 48K sample rate and 24-bit resolution. So go ahead and set your sample rate to 48K and your bit rate to 24-bit as a starting point. You won't be disappointed. Okay, here we are in Studio One. We're going to deal with sample rate and bit rate. Well, we're going to start a new song, and we get a page here. Okay, now, sample rate. Here's our choices. 41 all the way up to 192. And I'm picking 48 because that's what I usually work in. Resolution, 24-bit. We have a choice on resolution as well. 16, 24, 32, or 64. So, we'll choose 24. Typically, I work in 32-bit float, but I've been talking about 24 in this video, so I'm just going to choose 24 so I don't look like I contradict myself. So there it is. We've picked our sample rate and our bit rate, and we hit OK, and boom, we have a song. Now we're ready to do some work. All right, Pro Tools, sample rate and bit depth. We start with a new file, and it's on the new session creation page, and here is your sample rate choices and your bit depth choices. And that's how you do it in Pro Tools. Now, if your system supports 32-bit, use that with 48K, because a higher bit rate adds more information to each sample. And that increases the resolution of each sample, giving your sound more definition, and that's a good thing. If you want to, go ahead and play around with 96K 32-bit or 192K 32-bit. I mean, go nuts. Bear in mind, you'll use a heck of a lot more disk space doing that, and the number of plugins you'll be able to use will decrease dramatically. Now, I can't cover all the specifics about every DAW and every audio interface, but what you've seen in this episode should cover the similarities all those DAWs have regarding connecting to an audio interface. Most DAW and audio interface manufacturers have tutorial videos covering this topic, and I encourage you, please go visit the website of your DAW manufacturer and your inter audio interface maker for more details. Okay, now that we've got the DAW talking to the interface, it's now time to finally start doing some recording. And guess what? That's what the next episode covers. In episode four, I'm going to show you how to put a microphone in front of an acoustic guitar, then plug that mic into an interface, get the level you need, then record that acoustic guitar on a track in a digital audio workstation. Then I'm going to show you how to plug a bass guitar into the interface, get the level set, then overdub that bass to the acoustic guitar we just recorded. Then we'll do a quick mix of those two things and play around the, with the mix a little bit. You know, maybe use some plugins, get some reverb, you know, have some fun. So if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and watch the rest of the episodes of the Home Studio for Beginners series here at Record Mix Repeat. I know it's going to help you figure out the ins and outs of recording at home. I'm your host, Rusty Smith, and thanks for watching. And I'm through doing this.